Hey guys, this is Sid Patel, CEO of International Bulk Wine and Spirit Show and also Beverage Fair Network. Thanks for coming here. I really wanted to uh, do a quick shout out on why this year's IBWSS show is going to be the biggest show. So this year we have some powerful speakers here. You know, if you're really trying to level up your game, really grow your business, you know, this is the show which you have to really attend. So pay attention to the speakers, you know, go and scroll this page down and you will see the speakers out there. The subject and the theme of the conference is planned around four pillars. You know, we are going really deep into the business of bulk wine, bulk spirits and private. So if you have anything to do with bulk wine, bulk spirits and private label, you know, buying or selling or even getting into it or even starting, you know, a private label offering in your winery, this is really the show which you want to attend. More importantly, what's going to happen this year is, you know, there are lot, lots of movements happening around sustainability, around private label, around small batch. So everything is going to come and play here, you know. So we're going to really have deep discussions around what other companies are doing, you know, some big companies, how they are practicing this, you know, how they've grown and, you know, how new buying is happening around this national change. Like what is target buying? What is their sustainability policy? You know, what is Walmart doing? Right. So, so this is where we really talk business of the business. So please, please join me at International Bulk Wine and Spirit Show on July 25th and 26th. And I look forward to seeing you all there. Hey guys, welcome to the Wine, Whiskey and Weed Show. This is your host, Sid Patel. I have a very super special guest here. You know, we're going to talk with Shreyas Balakrishan. He's the president of Cutwater Spirits, the number one canned cocktail in America. And I'm going to talk with him about how he's leading the growth here. So fun, fun episode. You know, if you are an entrepreneur, especially trying to figure out how to grow a fast company, you know, how are the, you know, HR or operational challenges and more importantly, how, how you, you know, you know, grow in 2023 and what, what are the scenarios. So uh, Shreyas, you know, I, I must add that, you know, there are uh, times when some brands really are contributor to the category growth. You know, we've seen that uh, with Sam Adams, for example, in craft, you know, a beer. We've seen some Gallo with Zinfandel, for example. We've seen Cutwater now, I believe, is one of the brands that I truly believe has contributed to the RTD categories, you know, putting it in the masses, basically, right? So uh, big, big uh, thank you for growing the category. And I'll uh, have this on to you. Just give us a little context about your journey. You know, uh, you are now leading the number one canned cocktail brand in America. So walk us over, give us a little a story about yourself. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sid. Thanks for having me. And it's a pleasure to be on on this podcast. And as you mentioned, I'm, I'm currently the, the president of Cutwater Spirits. Uh, based out of here in San Diego. Um, we are a fully owned company by Anheuser-Busch. Um, and my journey in the Alcbev space started 19 years ago uh, with Anheuser-Busch. I uh, graduated with a mechanical engineering degree and, and uh, got my a dream job for any recent grad is, and started as an experimental brewer for, for AB. Um, in, in St. Louis. So, you know, day in, day out, hands on making beer. Uh, mm -hmm. right. So the best way to learn, um, and you know, when you had the choice of the top ingredients, uh, best equipment, um, and then most importantly, some, you know, experts in the field, uh, the staff brewmasters of Anheuser-Busch for in-class learning. So, not just brewing process, but the science, the art, uh, and technology of brewing. So it was a, a great opportunity uh, to really understand product, process. Um, and then I got the chance to go to Los Angeles Brewery for kind of my first big brewery assignment and spent several years there with a great team, um, you know, managing different parts of the brewing process. Um, doing something, you know, uh, that I went to school for. I did some engineering, so I graduated with a mechanical engineering degree. So I've always had, you know, kind of love for process and operations. Um, so really running, running different parts of the brewing process in, in a large facility um, was an amazing experience. Uh, did some capital projects, some process improvements. Um, and you know, it was, 
again, a great experience. The next step, I think, in in understanding scaling of, of, of beers. And But then I got another opportunity to to switch to the distribution side of the business. And you know, even though I have, have the love for process and operations, I really wanted to get the full picture of the beer business. So um, this was still in operations, running the warehouse and distribution side uh, of company-owned wholesaler, uh, first in LA and then in New York uh, City. And um, this was a great opportunity to really understand the complexities and challenges of the last mile, uh, but also get an exposure to the sales side of the business mm. and understand retailers and interactions with retailers as well. Uh, and, um, you know, wonderful experience there. Then I got to combine all those things together as I led the uh, integrations for, for North America, for, for acquisitions in North America. Mm -hmm. This is during a time we were partnering with some craft breweries uh, across the country. Um, and so really combining all of my past experiences and ensuring that, you know, we had very smooth uh, integrations with, with these brewers, really uh, elevating them to you know, national breweries uh, as, as we've been able to do over the last few years. And one of them was the Legion Brewing Company, you know, well, well regarded brewer, mm -hmm. you know, somebody that I've, I've known uh, even growing up in, uh, in, in, in Georgia and um, the founders asked me to come run the business there as the president general manager. Uh, and so we moved to Seattle, uh, took on that role um, and really planned uh, for our national expansion and had some great success with the team there. Uh, really loved the opportunity of getting great beers accessible across the country. Uh, and, you know, resulted in Space Dust being the fastest growing IPA, uh, you know, over the, over the course of those three years. Uh, then in 2019, here comes my next dream job. Anheuser-Busch partnered with Cutwater Spirits. So I had the opportunity to go beyond beer uh, and take on my current role as, as president of uh, Cutwater Spirits uh, here in San Diego. So uh, similar kind of role um, coming to understand how we best expand the brand uh, across all 50 states. Um, and, and now we are actually uh, in all 50 states, but also internationally in UK, Canada, mm. and Australia as well. Super, super stuff. I think uh, one of the things I can really uh, relate here is, you know, founder slash CEOs, you know, you, you check those boxes because you've done everything. So that way, I think it was very easy for someone to put you in that seat. You know, it's just not like operations or sales or marketing or this and that. You've actually touched a lot of points. I can see that, you know, you've done everything. So you you can talk, you know, about the, to the retailers because you exactly know how it works. Distribution you've done, you've done the, you made beer, you know, so it's, it's, it's an amazing uh, thing, which usually usually, you know, founders learn themselves and you've just learned and you've just been there. So fantastic. One thing I'm really curious before we step into what exactly do you do in Cutwater is uh, the conversation that you had, you know, sort of what sort of interview happened or what sort of meeting? I'm sure it's on a casual setting or whatnot, right? I'm very curious about uh, what was the expectations and how did that meeting look? Hey, Shreyas, you know, we're going to grow this brand, blah, blah, blah. I need you to do this five things. Can you do it? So well, give me some meat there about what were the expectations uh, that can you do this job? Yeah, and I want to take that back to So yes, I have had great opportunities to understand the whole business, but I have not founded a, an organization. I think what, what was really important in, in both these roles with our legion and, and in Cutwater is, um, is ensuring that the founder vision, the founder's vision and um, what made the brand successful to the point in, in time that we had the partnership was carried through uh, mm. when I was when I joined the organization. So really, that those were the main conversations is with the founders Got and it. and really understanding their vision. You know the the culture uh, of the organization. Uh, how do we you know kind of fertilize and and, and kind of grow uh, mm. the team um, and and maintain that 
you know, kind of entrepreneurial spirit uh, within the organization while being part of a larger organization that can, you know, really speed up the, uh, speed up the growth. You know, founders have, you know, they go a lot on gut, right? So yeah. you can talk, you can talk about interviews and, and all those things, but really um, it's about, you know, past experience. It's about, you know, having a conversation with them over a beer or over a cocktail and, and um, you know, um, them having a, a good gut feel about mm. what you can what you can do for their organization. You know, what are the five things you mainly focus on, you know, on a weekly basis and on a daily basis, like just 90% of the focus, you know, uh, right things to do. Being the president is kind of uh, encompasses everything. And I have a privilege of leading, you know, an amazing team uh, over sales, marketing, operations. And we have a tasting room and restaurant uh, as well here in, in San Diego. And, you know, I can simplify it even more down than five, right? So, I mean, the role is to, is to set strategy, but most importantly, it's about supporting the team and then naming them to really do what they do best, right? Mm. Um, really, our success over the years is really um, due to the, the combined talents of the team, right? Um, so it's really about, you know, set strategy. If you want to break it down into five strategy, it's about support. Uh, for the team and finding the resources and, and uh, allocating the you know, resource allocation um, and kind of clearing clearing obstacles, right? Uh, any obstacles in the, in the past, plus planning for the future, right? So, you know, we have to look ahead. Uh, mm. and how, so, how much is how much is the daily firefighting? You know, like two hours of just problems, problems here and there getting pulled or you, you have yourself made, you know, a, a process that you're going to spend two hours in, you know, strategy, as you said, like, uh, you know, give us a breakdown of the time of the day, you know, usually like 20%, 30% is just solving problems. Yeah, every, every day is different. Uh, and, you know, you come into, uh, you know, during COVID, obviously, there was, there was a, there was a reallocation to, you know, uh, the time of, of what we were trying to do to ensure that we, mm -hmm. um, you know, kept everybody safe and, and, and had the, the operations going. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really about people, you know, 90% of the time is about people. Again, my love for the operations is, is, is still there. So, you know, walking and talking to everybody, understanding, you know, um, what's going on, what's working well, what, what we need to improve on. You know, you have to make sure you have time in the, in the day for those things while you still have all the meetings and, and um, uh, you know, retailer meetings and wholesaler meetings as well as internal meetings as well, right? So I think that's probably, uh, you know, to, to answer your question, the most important piece is the time allocation is, is to the people. And, and also, also some customers you said, like just getting on, and on the front line saying, hello, thank you and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, yeah, it's a, understand the customer, uh, you know, it's part of our, I think part of our success mm. is, is really having that customer focus. How does your meeting look like? You know, when you're pulling your sales manager operations, blah, 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 you know, you're mainly it's, it's, I'm, I'm just assuming that mainly it is from sales and push the growth happens, right? Unless it is a, a different problem you have, which is just can't fulfill demand, you know? Uh, how are you pushing growth, basically? What are some things that you're actually doing, uh, you know, to make sure that this is a disciplined approach to grow? To kind of set the, you know, uh, the base on what our culture, which is the majority of, I think, the responsibility, our people and our culture is, to, to, um, to our growth, our success, you know, kind of goes, let's just take back to the history of kind of how Cutwater was, um, was founded and what we came into, right? Mm -hmm. So our history goes back to 2007, you know, well before this RTD kind of revolution, we were actually the ones, uh, Cutwater was the one that kind of started this RTD revolution. So at that point in time, our founder, Yusuf, was, you know, doing distillation as a side project you know he was a brewer head, head brewer for uh Val's point and, and decided to do distillation as a side project mm -hmm. Val's point's growing growing and you know, a major force but meanwhile you know it's not being satisfied with kind of you know having just that it's like now let, let's see what else i can do what else i can push it 
and and really with limited resources, you know, he took a fermenter, turned it upside down, welded this, I mean, did all this by hand, right? Heating jacket on it and made his first still. And we used that still all the way till a couple of years back when we had to to scale it up and, and get a new still. But this is this this you know kind of culture of of innovation of of, of really um, not being satisfied with you know what what you have uh, and and really um, pushing the boundaries right and that led all the way till 2017 when we started Cutwater Spirits as its as its own brand and you know uh, and we started with four cocktails but you know out of those four cocktails the other piece of of the never being satisfied we continue to continue to innovate and out of those four cocktails that we originally started with I think only uh, two of them still exist right so it was about this this culture uh, again as I mentioned of really not being you know looking at the consumer first mm. and saying you know what can we provide uh, the consumer you know and really making them the centerpiece of the of the um, of what we're doing and not being com you know complacent constantly innovating making improvements to um, our product our processes so that really is like what we to set the base that's really what we try to continue to to cultivate here right so you know we have our daily operations and and things that we have to meet and uh, but we also have, don't lose the sight of having the time for creativity uh, and, and continue innovating, uh, but also, you know, having fun, right? So we're in, we're in a fun industry mm -hmm. and, and really uh, you can see the passion and, and our people and, and everything that they do. And um, really this ownership mentality of, of the product and it kind of bleeds through to everything that we do. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the kind of the structured, you know, meetings and, and things like that, they're, they're part of a business, but really I think the underlying piece is having this ownership mentality and having this passion for the product you make that, that really drives the decision-making at the, at every level, right? It's mm -hmm. that at every level of the organization, people are looking at, you know, what's going on in front of them and saying, how do I make sure that this is the best product that goes out to the market? Right. And how can I make decisions right then and there uh, mm. without having to pull a bunch of people in and talk and, you know. Uh, when you stepped in, right, um, in 20, 2019, I think you say, right? Uh, so yeah. let's say you were at X number and then in 2020, you became, uh, you know, 2X, for example. I'm just throwing some numbers here. Uh, did you decide it that, okay, this is where we have to go. Now let's start reverse engineering that how many people we need, how much money we need, how many more markets we need to open, how many more products we need to, you know, uh, apply the portfolio strategy and so on. You know, there must be a, a black and white 10 things you need to achieve and then breaking down by months or quarters, right? What is the approach like new, new markets, new products, which I, I think can be one or depletion rate, you know, uh, what are the numbers you always look for uh, to make sure that you are really uh, having that curve up? We measure the health of the business in many, many, many different ways. And, and really coming in, we have big dreams and big ambitions. So it's not about a specific, you know, number that we set in, you know, and to have to have uh, in, in, in the year. It's about having this dream, uh, this big dream of being the number one can cocktail, not only in, in the U.S., but globally, right? So we're constantly pushing toward ourselves and, and really pushing up, uh, you know, kind of um, the goals we set, right? You so, think about that? Like, let, let me uh, ask you that you are the one, hey, you know what? Uh, it's just not North America. Now let's go for the world. Like who, you know, uh, it's, it's usually it starts there, right? Like suddenly you just increased your goal you know how does this happen it, it again it goes down to the culture that we've set so when we sat down with the team and we had uh you know the leadership team and said hey what do, what are we here for what are we what are we trying to do uh mm -hmm. what are we trying to accomplish with this brand and, and what's the founder's vision uh as well okay. right to take that right and uh and then to distill that down into you know actual uh, numbers you know we look at uh, we look at what the category was and, and, you know, we saw that there's just 
endless opportunity. I mean, we came into a category that was previous to me, but was you know, just full of really not um, high quality. You know, it, it had a bad reputation. Right? True, true. So uh, when we came in, we saw the amount of opportunity that there is and what we were able to do here in California and mm. then taking that, you know, to the rest of the country and, and really having the education piece of understanding that this is real spirits. It's not malt based. It's, yeah. So it's, it's all these things that, you know, uh, that we, we sat down as a team and decided, you know, we have these big goals. We have this dream. Uh, and it shouldn't be limited by, you know, a number we're going to meet, we're going to meet our goals. We're going to, you know, whether it's going to be, we might meet them in six months, we might meet them in the year, uh, or it might take a, a little bit longer, right? But let's make sure that every step we're doing is, is in order to really expand the categories to, you know, be the, the leader, uh, to help the consumer navigate the category, to help the consumer understand what real spirits real canned cocktails can yeah. be, right? You believe in momentum uh, and timing, right? So I think we, you are, we are right now sitting in 2023, the most predicted high growth RTD like year. So I'm sure like with Budweiser backing up or you know whatever it is, I'm, I'm sure you're gonna put acceleration there, right? So how are you playing or what, what's your thought on as a business leader about timing, let, let's go. No matter what, even if I break even this year, I got to gain the market share. How do you think about those kind of things? The category is expanding very rapidly, right? Uh, and when we were you know, coming in, uh, we were the ones that were kind of growing the space and growing the category, right? So yes, I mean, at that point in time, it's we have momentum. We need to keep that momentum going and we need to uh, continue to be the leaders, right? Um, and then, yes, about investment uh, at the point in time is we make investments, but we make them with the long term, uh, long term view. You know, even through through uh, the challenges of the pandemic, you know, it's it's to it's to really look at the business and make sure that we have sustainable growth um, for for a long period of time. Because what we want to leave, what the founders want to leave behind. Is, is a legacy of a brand that continues through, not just has a, a spike up uh, immediately because their category jumped and we were able to throw in you know, uh, a bunch of different cocktails in the mix and, and, and have some great uh, volume work for a short amount of time, right? You know, so you don't use much of a discounting or a big chain drops strategy or whatnot. You, you, you're disciplined and focused on you know, small quality placements, on-premise placements or whatever, like, uh, you know? Yeah, it, it's really about building the brand, educating the consumer, mm. uh, understanding that we are a different proposition than what was out there. And that was a lot of the heavy lift up front, right? Because mm. we were the only ones in the category with a high quality product, right? And now you have a lot of people coming in, helping in that education front about real spirits, uh, making the pan cocktails, right? Uh, or RTD. So, yeah, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, growth is is great, but it needs to be sustained and uh, lasting growth. What are the main factors that you think contributed? Let, let's just take last three years, for example, you know, but walk me over some five moments that really helped you. As you mentioned, people and product are the most, you know, most important thing. I, I truly believe our competitive advantage is our, is our people and our culture, and of course, our ability to make the amazing cocktails on uh, based on these spirits that we make ourselves. But the, the moments are, you know, as, as I think you you had a previous discussions on, on the innovation cycle is understanding when to innovate and when to, mm. you know, when to, when to quickly kill something that didn't, didn't sort work. Sort of being the first right. and then eliminating what's not working fast. That's one of your strengths. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 and moving quickly, right. And in, in, mm. in those times and then continually, improving as, as well. Uh, and so, you know, uh, we are the number one ma uh, margarita uh, in, in the marketplace. I believe we're the number one rum co uh, tech cocktail as well, or, or uh, the top uh, vodka cocktail as well. So it, we have the categories across all spirits, right? And so again, the the challenge is to continually innovate and not just rest on those 
uh, on those numbers. And um, the other piece is, you know, we have a, a great opportunity to interact with the consumer with our tasting room, right? So we have this ability to, um, you know, have this re open relationship with our, with our tasting room clients, right? And where we have a two-way dialogue of here's the new product, here's what we're, we're doing, what is your feedback? Uh, and we have the ability to 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 alter and change things. Uh, and so again, there is enough volume uh, in your tasting rooms that you can use that data. I we believe we have a very good cross seg uh, segment of demo right, being where we mm. are in in San Diego, uh, and um, you know, so we we look at data um, and, and and with our own population as well, our own employee base as well. We have mm. a good demo uh, in, in, in our employee base as well. So we use all of that data uh, as well. And then to more, you know, just to maybe more directly answer your question about, you know, some of the um, critical moments is, is going into the pandemic, you had a opportunity um, if you had good manufacturing practices, you know, a good supplier uh, vendor relationship, uh, you know, we had um, you know, backup going in before we had dual source uh, for for certain commodities, right? And and um, so those things are all you know very beneficial in ensuring that we had supply through a very difficult uh, difficult time. Uh, I know I've said this several times, but then it goes to our people, right? You know, our people mm -hmm. coming in and um, you know through a difficult time, making sure that you know every day in and day out we make some high quality. Uh, products that, that everybody is, is really excited about and proud of. Um, you know, a lot of people had challenges across the, the country during this time frame. But when you're, you know, when you have this culture, when you have this, um, you know, uh, this momentum, uh, it, it's, it's really, um, really contagious. Let me ask you a fun question, right? Now, you also did Super Bowl ad. Uh, and, you know, uh, sometimes you got to do those kind of things just because you're number one. You know what I mean? So did, well, a fun black and white question. Was it ROI? You know, I know you can't measure, but was it worth it? Like, do you think it's still a good marketing play? Again, we, we had momentum. We, we were great, in, you know, raising awareness. So it, it grew uh, definitely awareness in uh, across the country for the brand. Uh, so, um, you know, again, we're looking at long term you know, kind Got of long. So the goal was more of just getting recognition. That's it. Not like sell throughs. Yeah. Yeah. Just gaining Fair awareness enough. for the brand. Fair. You know, what are the growth opportunities you see in 2023? I mean, I know that you can't disclose much of your strategy, but overall, just to help some other small brand owners, you know, uh, I'm sure you guys have more data. So where do you see you doing more marketing? You know, uh, uh, maybe it can be TikTok and less TV or whatever it is. Uh, and where do you see uh, more distribution? Like, are you going more on, you know, retail back again, which we are hearing that we direct to consumer is going down again and back to the business, you know, we are on. So what, what's your thought on 2023? You know, 2023, you know, there's been tremendous growth and it's going to continue to have tremendous growth in the, in the RTD category. So um, really it's about finding new ways to, to make, make a splash and new solves for the consumer, uh, right? And, um, you know, I can talk a little bit about some, some of our innovations in between. So we do bottled spirits. So we do, you know, like I said, we have our own spirits that we do. And we put it in bottles as well, right? So it's the same award-winning spirits that go into our cans uh, that you can buy in bottles. So in between the bottles and the cans, we've got, you know, we just launched uh, an RTD or a, a line called Peters. So this is, you know, kind of warm cocktails that you just have to add it already has the blend of, of everything for a hot buttered rum or a whiskey toddy, and you just have to add hot, hot water. So it's kind of in the in in, nice. in between in between the lines, right? So we're always continuing to look between the lines and and find new news to innovate and and provide the consumer with a solve. You know, so me mezcal and tequila is an old thing for you. So what's the new thing? Like what what are you know what can we expect next? The mezcal still you know obviously has. A, Ton of opportunity to continue growing, right? So, uh, but we are we are just uh, just talking with our our, our partners down in, in Mexico about the toll, uh, which is uh, you know I think some of the some of the new hot trends, right? But but again, these are these are again we're these are smaller 
things versus um, you know long sustainable sustainable growth. And um, you know, with the RTD category, you know, kind of continuing to to grow, we I think it's it's really about sticking to your your focus, your your competitive advantage. We make complex cocktails that you can't just you know go out and do yourself without prep and ingredients and cleanup. And so we have this solved, and we want to just continue communicating that, right? So I think uh, to answer your question about where we're focusing our kind of marketing, and it's about the education that you can have our ready to drink cocktails with award-winning spirits anywhere. You have the benefit of getting into the Budweiser distribution network, which is one of the best, you know, they, they have all accounts, basically. Are you guys distributed mostly just exclusively Anheuser Bush network, or you have small and medium other wholesalers as well? We, we have a mix in the distribution network, but uh, majority of our wholesalers are um, AD, uh, AD wholesalers. Um, you know, I think AB wholesalers, as you mentioned, are the best in, in, the, in the business for, for, for beer distribution. And our product being uh, ready to drink in a can uh, has a lot of similarities uh, to, the, to the beer. How it, what kind uh, of trainings do you do, like, you know, uh, at a beer wholesaler? You know, three or four things. What's, what's your quick elevator pitch to the sales reps, you know, uh, of distributor? Yeah, it's, 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 again, talking about the education of our real spirit um, in the can. Right. And, and, and I think you're right. And as far as a beer distributor, it's something that, you know, they're, the knowledge of, of, of spirits and what actually goes into the can is mm -hmm. some opportunities. Right. So how are our processes for our vodka, our tequila, our rum that we make in house and um, and how that contributes to the quality of our beverage? Uh, our, our RTD can cocktail. Right? What's your take on a non-alcoholic uh SKU. I'm, I don't remember, but do you, do you have it? We have some mixers. So we have some, you know, again, we make uh, mixers like ginger beer and, and Bloody Mary mix. The uh, same things are going in the cans, right? Uh, so we actually have a non uh, or mixer line or non alpha line and uh, they do well. And, uh, you know, of course you see the, the trend right now with dry January, just finishing with a mm -hmm. lot of non alpha in the space. I think it's an interesting uh, interesting category and, and something like I said, we're all. I think I, I think for sure it looks like, especially the UK and other international. Like if you had, I can imagine Cutwater, no alcohol gin, no alcohol tequila. No, just that word, you know, using that boom, uh, can yeah. be. Uh, I, I can't. Sure. I can't. I won't dive into. It, but we're always innovating, so that's that's not out of our uh, out of our realm. So we are we're definitely looking at that as well. You know, any things that you would want to add for the small and medium sized brands, you know, in RTD space who are trying to collectively grow the category, you know, what are your tips for them? Yeah, I, I think that's the, that's the ultimate goal is to grow the category, right? It's not in between. There's plenty of space within the category. It's about, you know, coming out with the best product, uh, you know, and, um, and ultimately making sure that the consumer understands the advantages or their choice and to grow the category collectively, right? We're not here to, you know, I don't think that there's, there's so much room, so much opportunity mm. uh, in the, in the category that we have that, we have that opportunity. So come with, you know, good products. I mean, it's, it's table stakes now, right? So you have to come in with a, with a, a, a great product. And then the innovation piece, you know, the consumer taste is, is, is constantly evolving, um, but also everybody seeks, uh, seeks choice and variety. Um, so those are all, um, those are all the things that we kind of uh, continue, like I said, continue to, to live by uh, day to day.